Even in one of the most politically liberal counties in America, good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people are protecting themselves from criminal violence. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's great defensive gun use comes to us from Tacoma Park in Maryland. To win the fight after the fight, you need help. After a use of force, I trust Firearms Legal Protection to help me win the fight for the rest of my life. From their 24-7 attorney answered hotline to coverage for the use of all legal tools, Firearms Legal Protection has you covered. Get a discount by signing up at the link below. It's 11 o'clock at night and dude in the far car top left is putting some air in his tires. He is a legally armed citizen. The, the car that's towards the middle of the screen is filled with four dudes who uh, have been involved in a couple of armed robberies. They have stolen that vehicle and now they're looking for more people to rob. So what you're gonna see is dude get out of the back seat, kind of wander off like, hey, I'm gonna sit over here and then I'm gonna kneel down and tie my shoes. Dude in the driver's seat then is going to jump out eventually with a gun in his hand. And when he does, look at our defender. He's paying attention to that, realizes what's going on. He goes and gets his own gun out and gets behind his vehicle. Now he's gonna streak some shots towards these dudes. They are going to streak at least a few shots back towards him. And then he is going to run off down the road. That makes dude with the gun run off a little temple index action here. And then dude number two, dude number three, Dude number four are at various times going to wander off from that vehicle as well, eventually get all their trash out of it and go back to it. Our defender has run off long ago. Police say they're still looking for these guys because they stole this vehicle, but I kind of doubt it. Man, imagine how badly this one could have gone if our defender was not paying attention and was just totally engrossed in what he's doing. That's our first lesson. Now, first of all, we have broken some rules of stupid here, right? So it's 11.15 at night, and this guy's out airing his tires. So remember the rules of stupid. Don't go stupid places with stupid people at stupid times and do stupid things. And gas station convenience stores are a stupid place. He's out past, you know, 11 o'clock at night. That's a stupid time. Now, sometimes that's the only choice you have. But if at all possible, man, avoid those kind of things. Make sure that you're armed with your firearm at all times and that you're paying attention to your world because the chances of bad things happening go up exponentially. Thankfully, our defender here was paying attention and was armed and was able to defend himself. If you can, of course, you want to avoid these kinds of problems if at all possible. Now, I want to note here, again, on our, our secondary guys, what are you paying attention for? You're paying attention for things that are out of place. And so this car just kind of parked here in the middle of nowhere, not doing what you expect at a gas station, not getting gas, not going into the convenience store like you'd expect is a huge red flag. And, and again, what would you do in those instances? I know you've put some quarters in the air machine and you wanna get some air in your tires, but that's the time to get in the car and get the hell out of there. That's exactly what this is here and may have avoided the gunfight altogether. Again, I'm not blaming him at all for this. I think he's a stud and I think he did a good job, but again, trying to avoid it if at all possible. Now, uh, you know, again, attention buys you time. Time buys you options here. You got multiple attackers who are coming out, at least one of whom is armed with a gun. And now what do you do? He's paying attention and seeing what's going down with these guys here. Now, there's not an attack yet. And I know it's part of our culture that people want to kind of give other people the benefit of the doubt, right? But this is a point you should be in the car and gone. We recently at, at the ASP National Conference had somebody leave afterwards that saw some shenanigans not completely dissimilar to this. His decision, nope, I'm going to jump in my car, stop pumping my gas and be gone from here, literally saved him from being in a gunfight. Those guys tried to pin him down. So again, if you can get away from him, he did get away. This is a very good thing. Now instead, now you see a guy who has got his gun out and now you got to go. So our dude has got stuff in his hand and he realizes, oh no, this guy's got a gun in his hand. What am I going to do? Now your draw to first shot time really matters, everyone. I mean, it really matters because speed is to a gunfight, like strength is to a cage fight. Like my friend Alan Clark says that, you know, it's not the only factor, but only a fool wants less of it. So you need to get your gun out quickly. That means you need to drop the stuff that's in your hands. Can't tell you enough, in your training, drop the stuff that's in your hands, go and get your gun out. Because if you have a two second or less draw to first shot, while you're probably helpfully, hopefully moving to a little bit of cover here like he is, now is the time to start using it. This is the place here where he starts drawing, right? So how fast do you want that gun out and a first hit on this target? Now this target here, I think he's a little farther than seven yards. I think he's at about probably nine or 10 yards here. And so we say, you know, find that three to seven yard, uh, you know, distance and make sure you're really good at it. Yes, but make sure you're even better at the farther distances too, because you've got one guy at maybe nine to 10 yards and a second guy at about 15. 
in a purely, truly justified defensive gunfight. Now instead here, he's a little slower on the draw. Hey, he gets and moves out of the way and then gets his gun out. I do love that he moved to cover here. Again, if you've got the ability to get that gun out fast, get a first shot on somebody, we always say shoot then move, move then shoot. Uh, but again, you're not always able to do that. And so if you're not able to get the gun out quickly, get the stuff out of your hands, moving to a place where you have concealment at the very least. And I recognize a car is not always cover, right? Parts of the car are, but very few. Mostly it's concealment, but what we find in private citizen gunfights and non-military engagements, concealment works pretty well, and it works as well as cover about 99% of the time. So getting behind some concealment and getting some accurate hits on the other bad guys is important. Now he's gonna come around here, get his gun up, and start rocking and rolling on these guys, recognizing a couple things. Number one, if you back off your car a little bit, recognizing you can't back off too far, there's a streak back there, it gives you a little better angles. Number two, you think about it, they're about three car lengths of distance here between them because they're not bumper to bumper. So there's something approaching here, 20 to 25 yards. So I would guess, you know, your average car is somewhere 18 to 22 feet is your average car length in America these days. They're not right on top of the car. There's probably at least a car length between them. So there's somewhere 20 to 25 yards here. That skill set necessary for a private citizen in a real private citizen gunfight. An even better skill set here is to know when it's time to run. And this guy got the heck out of there and I'm super proud of him for being willing to boogie, recognizing that your average bad guy, just like your average private citizen, can't hit the broad side of the barn and he couldn't hit his butt with both hands if he drew him a map. Okay, fine, boogie, get out of the danger zone, run off if you can, but recognize he's not trying to strafe and shoot, he's running, he's turned his feet in that direction, running hard, it's actually a good decision. Of course, if you had a family in the car, if you got somebody you gotta defend in the car, first of all, you wouldn't use it for cover. Second of all, you can't run away. You're gonna have to stand and have the fight and win the fight that day. So skill set, good. If the family's not in the car, boogieing out, saying, hey man, they shoot the car up, whatever, I'll get a new car, I'll put an insurance claim in or any of those things. And that's fine. Now, all these follow-up actions, you're like, well, you know, they didn't stop these guys. They can go off and rob somebody else. Quite frankly, none of that is my concern. My concern and my mission as a private citizen is to break contact with a deadly threat. All the rest of this stuff, anybody else in the world has the right to protect themselves as well. So if you can break contact with a deadly threat, you win. Now, of course, the shots that he took, where did they go? I don't know. So I wish they would have hit. That's why I want you to have a high skill set. Paying attention in your world. Yes, carrying your dang gun, being very good with it, making sure you can hit and know when it's time to run part of covering your ASP.